Hi, today I'm going to do another dirty flip and drag using greens. I've been doing so much blues and I do a lot of pinks and purples. Um, I tend to stay away from greens, so I'm going to do those today. Shake up my white. So, use my DuraClean satin uh, Dutch Boy White Ultra White and that has already been mixed in here with Floetrol and water just I mix it so it's I like it pretty thin um, maybe around cream consistency and then I'm just using different shades of blues. These are, some are Artist Loft and some are Liquitex Basic. And those have been mixed with Floetrol and water. They have not had silicone added to them. Um, here, I gotta get a drink of water. I mixed them all beforehand and because for a while there I just was making up big batches and then they were always ready on the go but those are kind of coming to an end and I didn't put silicone in them just so it's easier to remember if none of them have silicone then which ones have silicone but I am using the WD-40 silicone but I add it to the empty cup. Spray it. And now I'm gonna layer my paints in no specific order. This is a metallic. I love metallics. Keep meaning to buy some like powders or something, some sparkly. Add those. I just haven't gotten around to it. You think on one of my daily trips to Michael's that would have ended up in the cart at some point, but it hasn't yet. We're just going to finish that one off. These things are great. They're those little two ounce disposables because when you're making paint and you just have a little bit, um, these are great. I love them. Let's do some lime green. This is the Artist Loft Metallic. There's there's like a green and then I think a, some other kind of turquoise. And there, this is kind of a mix between the two. And there's probably some other colors in there. It was one of those every time I'd mix and have a little, I just kept adding to it. So it's got a little bit of everything in there. I'm going to add some more of the lime just so I can finish that off. And these are the little Ziploc containers. They're four ounces, I believe. Um, I thought they were great. Um, they, I have not liked them. They, I, I learned the hard way and I guess I should have figured it out. They are not leak proof. So if you shake it, paint will come out. Um, so note to self, and if you're packing lunches, don't pack too many liquids in that either. Oh, and I was going to add some silicone halfway through, and I didn't. I will just add it on top. Voila. Can you see? It's beautiful. Oh, and I should be doing this on a table because my back is bothering me today. So, but with the help of uh, pain medication and painting, I should be all good to go. So I'll blame my bad performance today on pain and medication and not just lack of talent. I can do that, right? Oh my goodness. All right. I'm almost out of white paint, which is awful because it's like all I use. So I'm just going to pour around it. Oh, 
you can see some that has already come out. It looks like the colors are gonna be really pretty. Oh, uh, you can see, I think I'm gonna like this one. I love, this is a 12 by 24 canvas, and this is my absolute favorite size to work on. I don't know what it is about this size, but um, almost all my favorite paintings have been on this size canvas. And slide it. Slide it some more. Let a little seep out. Oh, you can see. We'll sleep, sleep out more. I added more color than I have been because I wanted um, a little bit more dramatic look than I've been getting lately. Um, I mean, you can just see all the cells forming and the colors are going great together. And I think I'm gonna let it go from there. And I'm gonna let it sit for a minute to see where it's gonna go. And I'm gonna add a little bit more white right here. And I am going to start tilting now. There's a big drag mark right here, which is kind of why I added that white. There, that'll help the paint flow a little better. And feather it around the edges. Makes it easier to tilt that way. Oh my goodness. I know, you all are probably like, Ann, if your back went out and is spasming, why are you sitting on the floor leaning over? And the answer is because I have no common sense. So, start tilting. But painting also helps um, get my mind off the pain, because before, I was kind of laying in bed going, ow, this hurts, and I'm bored. So at least this gives me something productive to do today. You know, instead of like doing stuff around the house. And I have the show on Saturday, and I said, I'm not going to make any more paintings because, I mean, obviously they won't be ready on Saturday. But then I have another show next Friday, and I thought, ooh, well, some of them could be ready by then. That one should be interesting. That one is in, we've got like a first Friday in a part of town. And for that one, next Friday, I am being hosted by a boutique. So, which will be interesting. I won't be sitting outside, which will be nice because it's hotter than anything right now. Um, so it'll be interesting. I've never done anything like that where I'm hosted. So I'm pretty excited. And they're being super cool. I can leave my stuff there all through the month of August. I can leave it on display there. And they, on the Friday when I'm there, I get 100% of the proceeds, profits. And I can leave my stuff there all through August and they're only taking 15%, um, which I think is amazing. All right, so what you can't see is I'm gathering up some of the wet paint that has tilted off and I am just filling in on the edges. 
that may have gotten neglected. Poor little neglected edges, they're so sad. Okie doke. Yeah, my next pour today is definitely going to be at a table where I can stay. So this one's interesting because I've got pure white spaces. Normally, I wish I, if you were the one on Acrylic Pouring Basics page that said like um, ghost cells, because I keep thinking about you, but I can't remember who said it. This doesn't really have any ghost, ghost shells or shadows. It's a little one happening here, but usually when I do this drag technique, I end up from the paint underneath it it'll show up in unique places. But I love this, it's like spiderweb laciness. And the blue outline, the dark blue outline, I am really digging these colors. Um, I think I'm just gonna tilt it a little bit more towards you, but very, very slightly. So slow, it's like it's not even happening. I just want this part to move down there a tiny bit. So if I go really slow, I don't even know if you guys can see it moving. It's moving so slowly. Ooh, there's the color. There's some underneath. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's what's neat with this technique though, is the color, the color hides under the white. So if I were, which I'm not, because it would probably ruin it, if I were to run my finger right across this white, um, it would give probably a really cool swipe because there's colors underneath there. As you can tell when I just did this little bit here. See that? There's, there's colors under there. But um, that's not the look I want, but you could do that. That's what I like about fluid painting is that you can somewhat control it, but somewhat not. It's sort of like life, and um, it's just, you can just be free. You can just kinda, kinda paint does what it wants, and I'm gonna look at it from another angle to make sure if I think I'm done. And I think I am done torch it a little. I'm curious to see what will happen when I torch this area, if anything. See, look at that. Remember I said all those colors hiding? this one completed. I'm going to stand up and get another look at it. But yeah, I really like that one. The colors ended up being really cool. If I can make my way back here, see if I can um, take you off of here and zoom you in. Close your eyes, I'm going to make you dizzy. There you go. 
if you guys watched my video yesterday, the um, flip and drag, turn swipe, turn hammer, that one is drying over here. And yesterday I wasn't so sure about it, but today it's looking kind of cool. And I love this area right here. I love this. So thanks for watching.